So behind me, well, other than Mike, <laughs> we have a Lely Optimo 240. Straight plain disc mower, which I bought last year from an auction, or oh, must have been before Christmas, out of season, and I paid 700 pounds for it. So theoretically, that is a very cheap disc mower. But we may have a bit of an issue, or we may not. Let's have a look. So Michael, what's your thoughts on Lely disc mowers? They wouldn't bad, to be fair. They've um, now ceased trading, I believe, the side of, this side of things. I think the... Uh, well, Agco, Agco bought them out, didn't they? Yeah, that's it. So you've, you've worked on a few. Worked on a one or two. Well, Mike used to work for a the, dealer who was a Lely dealer, didn't you? That's it, yeah. The idea being you build them up in sections. So you've basically got a nice long bar with a big nut on the end, which will be there. There it is. And each, each mower uh, blade is a separate section, a separate little gearbox. And in theory, they say that's supposed to be more, more uh, cost effective repairs, but. More serviceable, apparently. Yeah. But what's I, the problem you found with many of them? I are? just don't necessarily agree with that because the nut on the end is done up like a million Newton meters. <laughs> And the, t the time it takes you to strip it all, all apart, you know, I wouldn't say it's necessarily any better than anything else. And you've so got belt drive. You've got a belt drive down to a gearbox there. Mm -hmm. You've got two sections of that gearbox. Very nice, as long as they're serviced. But if you get moisture in there, it turns to rust and gunge. That can be quite expensive. And one of your favourite words, detritus. Yeah, detritus, all right. <laughs> My word starts with an S. <laughs> so we could have got something on our hands here because Mike says, you know, that these, the way they're serviceable and where you have to undo these sections and bits and pieces is a bit of a pain. But the good news is, Mike, is that when you turn this one... Oh, everything turns, yeah. Everything turns all the way up through. Yeah. But if I come down here and look back up through... Now, if Mike does a finger test of how much distance we've got between the blade on that end. Well, let's go with that one there. You've got a good yeah. four fingers. Yeah. And then this end, we're only, well, well lucky you've got a thumb there. Hardly enough to say goodnight to the boss, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we might be, we might be all right. It might just be the way it sat. We don't know. I, I it's, think it's just the way you saw it, to be fair. Mike thinks it's just the way it's at, which would be great news. But it has got topper plates on, which I do believe are homemade topper plates. They might not be on the back. So the idea of topper plates is so you can lift the mower up off the ground slightly to be able to obviously top rather than mow, disc mow down against the ground. So first of all, we're going to get it into the workshop and take these topper plates off and see what we've got. All right, Mikey's gotten up your on the thing. He doesn't actually look quite so bad there, does he? No, he's... no I can't say as I've ever read because they, they slot together quite nicely. I've never had anything sort of warped. No. But farmer have been here because you can see lots of weld. Been in there with a stick welder or something, yeah. Mike, can he? Yeah, that's it. And, and that's your big bolt Mike was talking about. That's it, yeah. Never very, very fine threads and you, you can jump up and down on a 10 foot bar to your heart's content. And they still won't come undone. Do you reckon there's someone else missing? I fancy there should be a, a, a strut for this down three, because it seem, just seems a lot of weight whipping up and down on them there. So what's the first port of call then, Mikey? Well, the first thing would be to check the oil on that gear box up with, on, on, right up then, there, mm -hmm. and then see what that looks like. Yeah. Then after that, it's easiest to just check the belts, make sure your belts are there, mm -hmm. and then you pop the tops off. This, I say pop the tops off, but you can see it's quite rusty. It don't look like they've been took off. Right, so there's your topper plates up through, there's <coughs> one, there, one in the middle and one on the end, so we'd need new mowing yeah, skids anyway, yeah, wouldn't we, because we haven't got them. Farmer have been there because, again, they've been welded. They've been modified. Yeah. All right, well, sure. we'll, I think the best idea, Mike, is, as usual, leave you to have a play about and see what you can find. Yep, yeah, fair enough. So I just live in hope now that it was just a case of the way it was sat, and leave Mike to fiddle about and spuddle about with it and then we'll see where we are and then well probably hopefully only got to order some mowing skids to the bottom of it would be best case scenario 
Worst case scenario, we ring the scrapyard. Let's hope not. So Mike, you look like you're making progress or have you got, a, got some, something you want to tell me you've got some issues? <laughs> well, I've ripped most of it apart. He wouldn't timed up brilliantly. Oh, what, and the blade's timing? No. Right. He, I was a bit concerned about the bed being a bit twisted. Well, yeah, is that twisted then? The reason for that is it's only out, it's held together with a big bar with a, a nut on the end. With a big nut, yeah. And that nut got to be done up horrendously tight to keep everything together. So, so he is bent, so the, the answer is he is bent then, is he? Or what? twisted? You, if I... Oh, I see, hang on, yeah. If I go like... Yeah, that, oh, that. I see. Now, I undone that one with a rattle gun. Yeah. And you didn't ought to be able to undo it with a rattle gun. Right. So I'd probably say that wasn't as tight as he, he should have been. So he should be FT then, should he? He should be... You should be able to... <laughs> by a 10, 12-foot bar jumping up and down to do it up tight. Yeah. 900 and... Nearly a thousand newton meters, I think it is. Jesus, wept. That is, yeah, that's, 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 that'll be snug, wouldn't it? I that's see why you said they are hard to undo then. Yeah. The fine thread it is as a well. very fine thread and, mm. and... So yeah, if you wiggle that, then you can see the you can, bed twist then, can't you? All right, so he's not actually bent, he's just slack. No, because each, each, it's all sectional, so you've yeah. got a... I think you see the line up through there then. Oh, so you've yeah. got a little gearbox. Oh, are they? There. Yeah. And then a space replace. That's a dry space. Yeah. The grease is only in these little gearboxes. Yeah. Well, they're all loose then, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all open. Yeah, that oh, one's good. A bit milky in that one. Yeah, it wants uh, changing, basically. Yeah. So I guess we're missing. So where the three topper plates were? Yeah, where the, that's it. You want uh, three mowing, mowing skids? Yeah, the three little skids. Yeah. They didn't horrendous great things. No. It's not only that sort of thing. Oh, so that's, that's the mowing skid, is it? That's the mowing yeah. skid. Yeah. Did you have a, have a looky loo in this gearbox? Yeah, he, they've got, it should be uh, gear oil in there, mm -hmm. but they've got like a, a semi fluid uh, grease in there. Right. Which isn't the end of the world. No. But again, I sort of flush. Flush that out and put gear. What's that? Like EP ninety in there or something? Is it? Or? It's a half hand. It's something like ninety one forty in one part of it. Yeah. So I've slept several times since I've done one of these before. <laughs> so that is bloody good news. That is, and good news that Mike could get this nut undone there and go through. So is it very easy to strip these out, then, Mike, to take them it's apart, lot, or is that not? It's a lot of time consuming. To, we don't need to actually strip them down. I don't think you need to. No. There won't be no money left in no. the pot. My wages will go down to one yeah. pound fifty. Have <laughs> you thought that there was a bar missing that, here that to support that then? Because there's a bracket there, isn't there? Was that? Well, that takes you. Um, oh, swath bar. Oh, yeah, that's it, swath um, board there. Swath board, sorry. But there should be a bracket that comes off of there, and then he clamps around that. This right. Because it's a, to support this. Yeah, guard he's a bit assembly. Waving in the wind, isn't he? Yeah, it's a lot of length to. And you said you got a book, didn't you? Did you say you got a book? I, I got heaps of books, but I can't find a specific book on this one because. Right. <coughs> this this gives you the information about your torque for the nut on the end. Oh, Jesus, 950 newton meters. Now. Yeah. Crikey, O'Reilly. That's greased and clean yeah. and all, not mm -hmm. after it's been out under the edge for all winter and. Rusted up. Yeah. That's the gearbox, which is off your belt pulleys. That, oh, the one that, with the grease in rather yeah, than that. The, dry, yeah. That little bar there drives up through the drive all your mower sections. Mm -hmm. So to, to, to get to that one, you've got to strip all your sections off. Right. And it's a lot, a lot, a lot of work. The good news is we don't have to. No, I even go in. You're going to you gotta entertain it. <laughs> and this is. This just shows the different variations of the brackets on the end. Oh, for the one we think we're missing. Yeah. Up through there. Look. Oh, yeah, get on. Yeah. See? Helps to have a man who knows, eh? Oh, I don't know. A so man, man with a nose. <laughs> man with a nose. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to have to order up some parts, the mower skids, some blades, and other bits and pieces, and that gear oil that Mike needs to be able to make sure everything is absolutely bang on in this. He's going to make up a bracket for the end. 
and fiddle about with it otherwise to get it all sorted. But we're going to bring you a part two on this mower because I think it's going to be quite interesting of how all that goes back together and how that process works. I'm sure a lot of people out there who've got disc mowers who haven't been in this deep before might find that quite interesting and useful. So part two coming up. So thank you very much for watching this one. Drop us in the comments of what experience you've got on any disc mowers or if there's any points you can shout at us then great even more helpful so yeah thank you very much for watching please subscribe we'll see you in the next one cheers bye